I'm trying to find these dunes right now. There's somewhere out there. Let's see if I could get down this thing. Uh, so I've been wanting to do this video for a while uh, just to kind of go over the upgrades and stuff I've done to the bike which ones I like, which ones I don't, which ones I want I feel like I'm finally at a pretty good place with uh, my setup back here all right I'm actually gonna track this ride so I remember how to get here this will just pick up where I'm at right now and start creating a track to where I ride so in the future I could just route to my starting point where I just click track uh, I know where I'm at so far so I could just go back to that first point and follow the track from there. Let's see if I can get up this thing. It looks sandy. Yes, sir. I found the dunes. sure if I go up this hill it'll put me behind those mountains and kind of into the dunes All traction in my back tire. This is awesome. Oh, oh. this stuff is soft. Cool view. All right, can I get around this? Oh boy. Got her. Woo. 
Whoa. I wonder if those ones are gonna be like that. Wow, that's so cool. All right, I'm just gonna fly at it and see what happens. cow oh. look how soft it is my whole front tire is buried Wow, it's soft. So this colossal dunes. Literally sitting on the rear rack. All right. So now that I got my bike nice and buried, I'll go over uh, everything I've updated on it so far. Um, Obviously I have the Yoshimura RS4 full pipe. Really changed the throttle response of the bike. Uh, my rear rack is just kind of a random, I think I got it on Amazon. And it just bolts into the seat bolts. And it's pretty solid. You can see it has pretty much holes and angles everywhere to connect anything. The only thing I don't like about it is if you look where it bolts to the seat, it kind of pinches right here. Um, to get it really set in place, it, did, it does bend the rack a little, which it's not the worst thing. It just kind of bugs me a little bit. It puts like some strain on the screw maybe or pops might pop the back of the seat up or you can't really lock it where you want um, other than that the thing's awesome though I think it was like 70 or 80 bucks um, I bought it before I even got the bike because there was nothing nothing else available at all so I figured one day I'd switch it but it's been pretty good so I've just kept it and then this is the tusk fender bag I usually throw this on the front fender and I'll do like a, a front tube, some CO2 cartridges, and two tire irons, and those Motion Pro rim protectors. That'll all fit in here. Oh, there's some side-by-sides coming. Anyway, so yeah, I've been putting this, uh, I've been putting this fender bag on the back just for like quick, quick little three, four hour trips. And I basically just divert stuff from the tank bag into here to make more room in the tank bag. So I think in here right now I have like a beanie, uh, my first aid kit, and sometimes I'll throw a water bottle or like a snack in there. Um, and then anything longer I do the Tusk uh, excursion rackless mount that I have and I'll put a picture of that because I don't have it on right now but that works with this rack super super well um, I've never had to put the heat shield on the exhaust with it um, I know a lot of people call that out it really doesn't sit too close and the it doesn't make direct contact. I'm sure when I'm riding it's making direct contact. Um, the inside of that tusk 
uh, rackless system is super, super aggressive too. So it, I can't see it even burning or getting melted. Uh, there is like airflow going in between the exhaust and the uh, and the rackless mount as well. So yeah, I haven't had any problems. I've ridden with it a lot. I've had it for almost a year. So that seems to work fine with no heat shield. On the back of the Tusk setup, I usually had like one, I think I, I had like the Nelson rig little like fuel can holder and I had that strapped to the bottom of the Tusk. I've ditched that and got the Moscow, um, I think it's their little four liter, little auxiliary pouch. Um, and that straps in with the Molly clips and then I can now fit two, uh, external gas cans in there or like gas and water or whatever I want so that's been pretty cool I think I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side as well do another one of those auxiliary pouches and start building out a toolkit and keep it on that side because I really don't have like a proper toolkit or anything I usually ride pretty close to home so if anything were to happen I don't think I'd be totally stranded but yeah, that's something I have to do. So I'll likely run the Tusk with the two Moscow auxiliaries and then eventually probably just upgrade to a whole Moscow system. But the Tusk is awesome, especially for the price. Um, I don't have a top bag for that yet. I'm kind of waiting maybe to change to the Moscow and just do their whole setup with top bag and the two sides. So kind of didn't want to pull the trigger on a, the Tusk top bag since I'll probably switch it out. But I do have some like dry bags that fit up there fine. Just cheap ones from Amazon. And then my tank bag is the Nelson rig. I can't remember exactly which model it's called. Um, but this thing has been awesome. I have this on my old bike, the TW. And uh, it's great. It's big. I have, I keep zip ties in here. Some weird energy gel stuff I got at REI. I don't know when I'd need that. Balaclava. I keep my wallet in here. A few bars, battery, tire pressure gauge, uh, like a utility tool, front axle bolts. I don't even know what this stuff is. Some like electrolyte tablets, just random stuff. And then this front pocket is awesome. It's just like a Velcro sleeve. You shove stuff in here and I put my phone in there. Sometimes I put like handwritten map or notes in there. Um, and I can operate my phone through this plastic screen with my glove. It's not like seamless, but it works. If, uh, if you just pull over real quick and need to like unlock your phone or check something or change a song or whatever. So it does work, but this, uh, this tank bag is awesome. It's one of the cheaper ones. Um, this strap does come out a lot, which is kind of annoying. I'll probably just trim it. Uh, this one stays in place for whatever reason. I think these bands that secure it, they just get loose over time. They're not the best quality. Tires. I have the Dunlop D D606 in the rear. The Pirelli MT21 in the front um, for... I was kind of confused as which ones to get, um, so I'll just mention the sizing. The MT21 is the 90-90-21. Um, I put this one on myself with tire irons. It wasn't terribly difficult. Uh, the hardest part about it was probably getting the other MT21 off because it was pretty new. I'd accidentally ordered the 80-90 and it was way, way too thin. and. Uh, it was just scary hitting hitting rocks with that thing. So I got the 9090 and it's a huge difference. So that's 909021. And then the Dunlop is 139018. That's the one I'm running in the rear and this thing's awesome. Um yeah, so much more track. I would never be able to ride this with the stock tire probably especially this little U-turn almost got stuck on. So that thing, at least where I ride every day, is perfect. Uh, what else? Tusk uh, 
hand guards, the Deflex Pros. Obviously, they're not doing their job too great, but they save me all the time with bushes. Out here, there's these things are everywhere in turns and ruts, so they're uh, they're good for that. And I just pulled those from my old bike too and just switched the color of the plastic. You can buy these plastics for like, I don't know, 30 bucks and swap them out. So once you have the actual protector bar, then you're good to switch those on any bike. Uh, my bars, so my bars are the Wyndham RM mids. Uh, I, I pulled these from my old bike as well. Um, with the Pro Taper bar risers, they sit a little bit higher, which is nice. Um, to be honest, they were kind of all, they're the only ones I've tried because I got these probably two years ago. And at that time, that was when just everything was out of stock. So these were pretty much the only things I could get available. Um, but they've been good. Maybe one day I'll try something different, but they're good for now. Um, and then the Adventure Spec fairing this is the sierra 300l specific one it's not the uh like universal fairing uh you can see it just uses stock bolts here jiggles a lot but it's pretty secure i notice it does vibrate a lot um but it's been awesome it helps riding on highway for sure it's a little bit scary riding stuff like this if you happen to like your face does get pretty close to the top of this once in a while if you kind of like nose dive or compress the front fork. Uh, so I don't love that, but usually out here you're leaning back anyway. But if you do get in a weird situation, I've gotten pretty close to hitting my face on this. Um, and then obviously the stupid brake line, I'll have to figure that out. If anyone, I'm sure there's, uh, I'm sure there's fixes for that. I just haven't gotten around to it yet and I don't really want to jeopardize putting it somewhere. On the Adventure Spec, it comes with the this GPS mount uh, from Adventure Spec, and I have the Garmin um, Sumo XT mounted on there. It's been super awesome so far. I have it wired straight to the battery. Um, I take it off every time I store the bike or I'm not riding the bike. If I go in a restaurant or something, I just pull it off. Um, I'm not really forgetful in that way. I know some people like to put it on a, like an auxiliary switch or something, um, but I haven't had issues with it. I just wired it straight to the battery because it came with, uh, it came with wiring for that. Other than that, things I want to upgrade are foot pegs. I don't hate these foot pegs. I know everyone changes them out. I think coming from a TW200, where the foot peg is literally as wide as my finger, this is like great to me. So I haven't had any issues with those. Brake lever, I'll probably switch. Shift lever, I'll for sure switch. I just don't know to what yet. This one's pretty chewed up and it doesn't, uh, this little piece got kind of bent out so it doesn't fully open. Um, what else? Levers for sure. My brake lever is pretty bent. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out which levers to buy. Um, yeah, so I'll probably do levers, shift lever. I want to get a nice chain. SRC Moto skid plate. That thing's been great. It gets dinged all the time. Never come loose. Pretty good coverage. Um, so that thing's been good so far. It's not super heavy or doesn't make the bike loud or anything. It came with some uh, it came with some padding to line the inside of the uh, the inside of the skid plate with to rest. So it kind of rests on the frame on a soft uh, on a soft texture rather than getting rocks and stuff jammed up in between the frame and the skid plate. So it's a nice little touch. Uh, other than that, I really just want to do the 550 Performance ECU. Um, I have a seat concept seat coming in the mail. I went with the low just because uh save some extra. I think you save like an inch right here. And I'm only probably like maybe f not even 5'8 with my boots on, maybe. Um, so I do get in a lot of scenarios where 
I'm tippy toeing or I'm on like a weird, you know, little bump or something and it does make the bike pretty easy to drop so get an extra inch out of that and I do think the black one looks nice and I just got the complete seat I didn't want to rip up the stock one I'll save it save it like that just in case I also have the twin air air filter I think it's fairly new um, yeah it's just a reusable uh, reusable oiled air filter so easy to pull out and clean and uh, you just kind of snap the filter the filter pieces back in the plastic frame so it's just a little easier than continuing to buy stock and it's pretty affordable too I think it was like 60 bucks for the filter so all right I'm gonna cover just real quick the gear I wear when I ride too um, this is the Scorpion XO 18950 helmet um, I honestly got it for the color a color super cool there's not many like matte earth tone helmets out there so i like the fact you can f flip it up and ride like open face or pull over and talk or get some fresh air without having to take the whole helmet off so it has this little switch activated sun visor like most most of this style helmet um i have the chin mounts chin mount uh, designed specific to fit this helmet. It's just a little, this 3D printed piece. It's super compact, uh, extremely light, obviously. And uh, the only downside to it is it sits so close to the helmet, I have to run the GoPro upside down. So it sits down here. Uh, when I run it up here, I can only get so much tilt on it before it hits the helmet. And you know, the way the helmet sits on your head is usually kind of f facing down a little bit. So I end up getting a view of like the ground and the dash of my bike and I don't get too much of like what's coming up ahead. So not a huge deal. I can just run it upside down and then I can get like full adjustment. However, wherever I want the GoPro to point. And then uh, this is just an iPhone, uh, old pair of iPhone headphones that I snipped the headphone portion off and just use the microphone portion. And that's just Velcroed to the inside of the helmet. Uh, probably gonna try and change that or adjust it because there's so many videos where you, I'm just, it sounds like I'm going into cardiac arrest and breathing so loud. So I don't think the positioning's right. So I'll probably change that. And then this is just a little adapter, female to male, um, that goes into the media mod and that picks up the audio. And the reason you just can't go straight into the media mod, you'll see this has these three, uh, this has three white lines on it. And I can't remember exactly uh, what the difference is, but you see that has three lines. This one has two. Um, and you need those, t you need a cable, a male with those two lines to go into the media mod and that'll get your audio working. Um, and then I just wrapped like, uh, I just wrapped the microphone in some like arts and crafts fur type material to kind of act as a pop filter. And then I got the Cardo Pack Talk Edge. Uh, this thing is amazing so far. The, it has the JBL. I mainly got it over the Senna because it has JBL headphones. I just have always had a good experience with JBL and their stuff gets really, really loud and bassy. So the speakers are awesome. I used to ride with AirPods in my ears and then in the helmet. And uh, one, it was really uncomfortable. It was kind of cool having noise cancellation with them, but uh, there was tons of times where I just couldn't even hear what I was listening to. Um, and then of course you can only control them from your phone. So then you're pulling over to do stuff. These you can pause, volume up, volume down. Uh, it even has voice control, which I haven't really messed with yet. Um, and then the intercom, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but the intercom just comes through and sits right next to my, uh, to my Apple uh, microphone. So I haven't been able to actually use it as like a comm yet with anyone. I've just been listening to music on it. So, and then I also run the, this thing is amazing. The Usui, I can't remember uh, 
which model this is, but it's a four liter, it's a four liter bag with a three liter water bladder. Um, the tube on it is awesome. It does not leak at all. It's super clean. It has this little back pocket. You could probably fit like two cliff bars in there or something. Um, but the design is, is crazy how secure it is. It sits high up. Um, the bladder fully loaded with water is not overly heavy or anything. So I've had Camelback. I've had a small Camelback that I rode with before. Um, and then I had this cheap Amazon, like more tactical water bladder with Molly webbing, uh, just cause I could store more stuff in there. And that thing flopped all over the place, smacked my back all day. And the weight was really low, which sucked. This thing is uh, for sure worth the money. These are the Liat Hydro Dry 4.5 uh, pants. They just came out and uh, they are so good so far. I had so much trouble with pants. Um, they have little, there's just ventilation here, big cargo pocket here, big cargo pocket here. There's a little key holder. You can see it has that extra seam folded over so they're fully waterproof it has another little zipper on the back right on the uh like right along the waistline i guess you could put like keys or something in there um they're in boot design obviously and these are my boots are forma adventure the mids they're not the high ones and the pants really they have a lot of play like the crotch is a good length i've had other pants where that was a problem like the what did i have the troy lee mono gp more of like a moto pant but uh god they were so uncomfortable because the waistband and the crotch area was so short but these things are awesome and they're fully waterproof nice thick high quality leather pads on the inside and then the uh the bottom of the pant tapers really, really tight uh, into the boot. So you're not shoving like tons of fabric in there. I'll probably get the matching jacket. I think uh, I might go with the 5.5. It's not fully waterproof, but it has a lot more pockets and storage and uh, just looks a little more heavy duty. So I'll probably match it with that. And then my gloves are just cheap, 100% moto gloves. Um, I'll probably also get Liat's glove that matches these pants and jacket. Uh, they're just kind of hard to find in stock. Other than that, I also run the Liat chest protector. It's the, I think it's the 3.5. It's the one with no shoulder pad. So I'll usually do on a day like this, it's probably, I don't know, like 50, 55 right now. It's pretty cold. Uh, so I'll do like a thermal base layer, chest protector, throw a hoodie or heavy jacket over that and then put the water bladder over all of that. And even those layers with the water bladder and the chest protector, it's not too, too bad. It's uncomfortable at first, like you feel like you can't breathe. And then once you kind of start riding and stretch everything out and it uh, starts sitting on your body normally, it gets pretty comfortable. So that's pretty much what I ride with on just like a short little day trip. And then of course, anywhere further or camping or anything, I have the bigger luggage set up. All right, we made it back to Giant Rock. And I was able to go the way that I was trying to go on the way there. So I guess all those military signs are maybe not specific to the road but just the land surrounding the roads. So I'm back on this quartz mountain. Camper. There it is. I don't know if this is true or not, but I was watching this thing the other day about Giant Rock and apparently a dude built 
an apartment underneath here and lived there and actually died there. And I think you could see like rebar and stuff and there's like a foundation over here. And apparently this guy, I can't remember if it was in like the 1940s or 50s, was living underneath this. Oh, there's a lot of people here today. So that's pretty insane. Hey, there's a TRX, Nick. Trailblazing boy. Almost forgot to show you guys my secret floater. 